What is up, players? Warboss Tay up in its mug. Welcome to part one of my two-part video series, how to paint a Commander Sorsha for the Kador army in the War Machine game. This is going to be a commission paint job for uh, one of my clients who's doing a starter set for uh, War Machine. So the colors we're using are Mephiston Red, Abaddon Black, Bugman's Glow, Rhinox Hide, Lamian Medium, Balthazar Gold, Lead Belcher, and then we're using Umbral Umber and Ordic Olive from P3. Uh, we're using Vallejo's Ivory and Dark Flesh. And we're using Cadian Flesh Tone and Kislev Flesh to do the skin. All six of those colors mixed up together for the skin recipe. There are other uh, alternates you can use, but uh, that is the colors that... Those are the colors that I found looking on the Kingdom Death Advanced Color Scheme uh, painting guide, and I thought it looks great for female skin, so I'm going to use it for our model. So uh, the first thing I did was prime our model in white, and that's to help you also find where all the mold lines are. And I decided the first color I wanted to use is Abaddon Black to paint on all the areas that would end up being black leather. Um, her hat, which is going to be a dark gray in the end, the uh, her black hair, and most of her, her bodysuit and some of her armor. So, um, yeah, like I mentioned, this is for a commission job for a War Machine starter set. You might have seen my other War Machine videos for the Kador Heavy Jacks and Man of War Shock Troopers, as well as the Protectorate of Menoth. Uh, what are they called? Cinerators, the Exemplar Cinerators, rather, and the High Exemplar Creos. If you'd like to commission me to paint up anything from a single figure to an army, I am open and available for commissions. You can get a hold of me at warbostastudios.com or warbostastudios at gmail.com. If you miss the tutorial music, you can um, find all of the music that I usually use for my tutorials at the link which I'm putting into the description. Okay, so now that I got all that preliminary stuff out of the way, you'll notice that I painted her, like the, her leggings, as well as her gloves and her bracer on her arm. And now we're going for the uh, little babushka hat she's wearing and her black bob hairstyle. Um, if you are interested in seeing an artist's interpretation of the War Machine figures, especially the ones in the main factions, you should check out WarMachineTactics.com. It is where I go for a lot of my, um, I guess, artistic renders of, of the models to see what kind of colors the um, graphic or visual artists would use if we were making a two-dimensional painting. So I'm I'm getting the uh, the bracers on her forearms. I'm getting her gloves, and uh, yeah, you can kind of see there. Uh, what we're also going to be painting in black is the inner lining of her outfit, her her stole up on her shoulders, as well as her uh, the inner lining of her coat down there. So that makes it a lot easier because um, that's going to be easier for us to highlight. And mostly, what I'm trying to do is just replicate the uh, studio, the Privateer Press Studio artwork, and um, I'm sorry, model color schemes, their standard color schemes. And uh, with my studio, though, I kind of pride myself on being able to do whatever color scheme the client requests. So I think that's something that we should be open to doing anyways. I, I know for a while in my uh, in my long career as a, as a painter, I uh, thought I didn't want to do anything Games Workshop did as their standard colors. I wanted to do, I wanted to go off the beaten path and really do uh, different things with my color schemes. And so that's kind of reflected in the choice of um, colors and uniforms that I've gone with. And then I've kind of gone back to the uh, Games Workshop ones and decided to do those. You can hear my dog playing with his, his favorite toy in the whole world, it's golf ball. Uh, so Mephiston Red is the color we're going to use to base coat all of her uh, red clothes and armor pieces. So we're starting here with the back 
of her coat. And you'll see that there's a fur lining that we're going to eventually paint in black as well. But for now, we're just going to paint um, the entirety of the coat. And if you get a little bit of red paint on that lining part, that's okay. I always tell people um, who get discouraged in your base coats and your base colors, don't be discouraged. Don't worry. It It is the most time-consuming part of painting a model. And... Um, a lot of people want to want to find shortcuts to to get past it but really the the best way to do it is there are some very good proficient airbrush painters out there who can use their airbrushes to to paint really small fine details and they have the equipment and the uh the experience to do that i'm not that good yet with my airbrush but i have years and years and years of experience using a fine detail brush to uh, get the base coats on and for me i find the the control of having a paintbrush that you're using your hand to guide each paint stroke for me is is the easier way to go at this point. Um, but I love I love my new airbrush. I love the uh, Badger Chrome. I love the um, the the Minotaur paint line, and uh, I'm I'm having fun learning how to how to use my airbrush to the best effect. For Kador especially, um, they they use the these bright reds contrasted with their spot colors, which are black and gold. Um, having a good airbrush will really help you get some good effects on the larger Warjacks, um, the Juggernaut, and I, I don't remember off the top of my head. I always forget what the other one is called. I should put a note in front of me. But those models can really benefit from the kind of blending and highlighting you can get with a good airbrush. For uh, myself, though, I've always used a hand brush even with vehicles you might remember a couple oh it's almost a year now about a year ago last december i was working on an imperial fists i think it was a predator and i did that whole thing by hand i used a large uh, scenery terrain paintbrush and i used a lot of coats and some very specific dry brushing techniques that i've um kind of been practicing over the years and I think I can do even vehicles really really well and really nicely. So my studio I've done everything. I've, I've done a Glotkin, I've done armies, I'm, I'm currently finishing up an orc army and um, the amount of commissions I've got on my on my plate is just so much. There's so many projects I've got going on and I want to just make sure I continue to have lots of projects. So uh, let me know if you are interested in booking a commission project with my studio. Okay, so now that we're going on with the Mephiston Red, you can see that I'm trying to hit all the areas that don't have black on them already. And having a good detail paintbrush is really, really important. Again, I'm using the Rosemary and Company brushes. This is a, I believe this was the uh, two aught brush and it is it is just so good. It really holds its its tip uh, with a little bit of proper care and maintenance. Any brush is really going to benefit from a good brush cleaner, properly taking care of it, making sure that you're not dipping your entire uh, paint brush into the paints and, you know, thinning down your paints and just cleaning it. So um, I, I love my brush and I love the effects that it's able to to get because it has such a great point. Okay, why am I going back to the Abaddon Black? I think I'm... Oh, I'm going to probably do the boots and the trim of the coat there. Here's a Warboss Tay um, hot tip if, if, you're, if you're into that sort of thing. When you're painting up a model, I usually find that what I want to is after the third or fourth color to be able to look at the model and get a good idea of of what it's supposed to end up looking like. If if I'm only working, it, for example, say if I was painting um, orcs and I was painting uh, red or evil sun orcs, which are the red the red clan of orcs. If I was um, only working on like the leathers or the silvers, and I save the skin to the very end, it, it it would probably for me as an artist, I would probably get discouraged because I I want to see. You know, I want to see my model being on the right track. So, with with Sorsha here, what I should have done because I'm I'm I think this is the point in the paint process where I was looking at her and I was thinking, oh, I really wish that I painted her skin next. 
because um, it just looks so weird having that white primer for her for her face and her neck while I'm working on on her clothes but uh, to each his own everybody has their own technique on on which steps to take at what point in the process so right now like I said we're working on the trim which is on the hem of her coat as well as the hem of her uh, little throw over over her shoulders it's a very minor thing um, in the model it's a very minor part of the sculpt but if we highlight it up interestingly we give it some good highlights it, it could look like some uh, very nice fur we could get a very nice fur effect if we do that well All right, here at this point, I've realized that behind the trim or underneath the trim, you really have to keep flipping your model around so that you can see all the angles because uh, you've got those shadows and those dark areas that need to be black and uh, you want to make sure you hit them uh, under the coat, under the, under the hat. You, you don't want to see your primer anywhere. Even though we will be covering just about all of the model, at least all of the red and black areas with uh, Rhinox Hide Wash in a little bit, we do want to make sure we know where all those shadows are, where they're going to be. So that back part is, again, the, the trim, fur trim of her little little outfit. The first time I was painting this, when I was painting over the white primer, I thought, oh, what if I, what if I do the trim in white and make her look like a make it look like a Santa Santa suit. Okay, so I'm I'm going to be painting Bugman's glow onto the face and the neck. And then I realized later, oh, I have this great recipe already from the uh, Kingdom Death Advanced Painting Guide for the Preacher model. And um, I, I found that online. You can look that up. Just Google Kingdom Death Advanced Painting Guide. And uh, the artist there is, has really, really creative painting guide on um, just mixing a bunch of different flesh colors together to create this very soft, pale looking skin tone, which is perfect for women, uh, female figures. And I think as I'm painting this on right now, I because usually I use Bugman's Glow, the Games Workshop skin recipe for just about everything now, no matter what, is Bugman's Glow base coat, shade with Raikland flesh shade, highlight with Cadian flesh tone, highlight with Kislev flesh, flesh and that's it. So I didn't want to keep doing that. So I, I think if, if I was to do this again, I would just cut the Bugman's Glow step out and just do it. Um, do it do it the other way. All right, Rhinox Hide, we're going to use to paint the leather of the holster and the leather of the strap hanging from her belt. It's a nice dark brown. Uh, it's a nice dark reddish brown. If you want to go with a very brown dark brown, then you could go with Dryad Bark, which is also a very good base for leather. I do all of the leathers on my Death Corps of Krieg in Dryad Bark because it's a very it's a very dark and drab brown. Rhinox Hide has a little bit of kick to it because there's a little bit of a, a reddish tinge to the brown. So even though it's a dark brown, it's got, um, I don't know how to explain it, it's, it's almost like a, a mahogany, a deep, rich mahogany brown. All right, moving on to the lead belcher. There's really not that much silver on the model. You've got the hammer. And actually, the more I look at the artwork for the model, I think I'm going to need to repaint a little bit of the hammer, The uh, specifically this, the whole haft and the handle is actually in gold on some of the official artwork. So I don't know why I thought it was so. I think it reminded me of the, um, of the halberds that the shock troopers use so I kind of just went with that without really checking the artwork and then um, afterwards I realized only the 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 pick and the axe head are in silver really the 
uh, the binding of the axe head, the spikes at the top, and most of the haft of the hammer there is actually in gold. So that's something I'll change in part two. For now, though, just know that that's that's kind of what I did. Also, the her uh, steam powered backpack is going to be in silver, and she's got some some tubes leading from right under her corset to kind of like uh, underneath her her armpits. So those are going to be silver as well. And I think when we get to the end of painting this model, then we'll actually do some um, silver rivets. But uh, for now, we're just going to leave those not in silver. And I think the, the bracers have some studs on them as well that we're going to be painting in silver. So we're a little bit over halfway through the month, and that means that Spooky Toberfest is coming up on us this year. I still haven't found a Spooky Toberfest official model to kind of represent what I'm going to be doing, but I do have a bunch of uh, Crix models that I, I'm going to be working on a commission for. And I'm also going to be doing a giveaway at the end of Spooky Toberfest for um, people on the Google group. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out. And uh, it's going to be a fun one. I still have to pick which uh, specific model I'm going to be using for the giveaway for that. But it's just as a way to say thank you to all the subscribers and the community for taking part in the crazy challenges that I think up each year. So there you can see I'm kind of working on the tubes and the piping. And I finished doing the axe. So I think this is where we're going on to the gold. Yep. So Balthazar Gold is going to be the color we kind of stick with. For, for our Protectorate of Menoth, we're building the gold up to the rich Vallejo liquid gold. But for our Kador, Kadorin Empire, um, Balthazar Gold is going to be our go-to. So I'm painting the, um, the handle there in gold. I think in the artwork that's actually going to be black. So that's something I have to change when I change the the rest of the half there into gold. And that's good. I mean, she's a character. She's got a special weapon. She's uh, She deserves to have that extra bit of flash and pomp and circumstance. So I'm going to be repainting her hammer haft in, in gold. Also getting the gold treatment, and this is uh, true for the concept art as well, is the binding on the top of the act or the hammer. That's going to be in gold. Okay, Abaddon Black. What is this? Why am I? Why am I looking at Abaddon Black? I think I'm just doing cleanup now. You know, at any point, if you are working on your model, your Sorsha, and you find that undercoat sticking through, you don't have to be this. Uh, this precise. I'm really only being this specific because I want to make sure I cover just about everything before we get to the washes. But really, the washes are going to help you do a great deal. Okay, now we're getting into the skin recipe. This is a fantastic recipe for female skin. If you haven't seen the uh, the video where I where I do that, the tutorial on how to paint female skin, that model, that Yafima the cloud giantess model actually got me first place in the single figures painting competition at my local game store. So uh, I think a great deal of that win came down to these, uh, this color recipe that I'm using. So it's really good because it, it allows you to mix and match your colors to the specific, um, not only just color and shade, but even you can denote uh, ethnicity through it because dark flesh is a very yellow ivory color and the more dark flesh you add the more uh, yellow the skin is going to be as uh, a contrast if you use a lot of umbral umber then um, your shade is going to be a lot darker so you can make your model look you know like she's uh, 
got a darker skin tone. So, so the specific uh, combination that I went with was about 40%, 40% Cadian flesh tone and Kislev flesh, and then 10% dark flesh, which is um, this very pale yellow looking skin color. And then uh, the other 5% and 5% was ivory and then um, Ordic umber which is the green one. And I thought it was interesting to use green as a shade for your skin tone, but uh, it really does work because we're not, um, we're not overpowering the, the color with green. The green is almost like an afterthought and you don't really even see it too much. So, okay, the best way to paint on the skin color is to do a couple of layers. So I let it, I let it dry. Um, because it's very thin to begin with, the color you're going to get is doesn't need too much thinning down and watering down at all. And so I let it dry and then I came back about 5-10 minutes later and then I put on another layer and then a third layer after another half an hour break. So you uh, want to have some other models on hand or you want to take a little break, get up, stretch your legs, um, check in with your lady boss, kiss the dog, and um, by the time you come back the colors should be dried. And what I'm doing now is I'm painting on the symbols on the shoulder pads with Abaddon Black. So at this point, we are ready to wash the model. And my favorite, my favorite, favorite, favorite way to wash and shade a model that is predominantly in red, that we're going to build back build up that red, build it back up to this uh, nice bright finish, is to use Rhinox Hide. And Rhinox Hide, about 25% maybe to 75% Lamian Medium. You're going to need a lot of Lamian Medium or Paint Thinner or uh, Paint Medium, Thinner Medium. I'm, I'm not sure what the uh, equivalent is in the Vallejo line. I've, I've used Lamian Medium for a while now. And most of my colors, except when I decide to go off the beaten path, are Citadel Games Workshop colors. So Lamian Medium, fantastic product. You can thin down your layer paints or even your base color paints like Rhinox Hide, and it creates a very good wash, um, very good glaze rather, and uh, it's fantastic for, for changing the tone and the color and adding a very interesting look to, to, to the brighter colors especially, like this Mephiston Red is a very bright red and uh, when you shade it down with, or w when you thin down and uh, you make your glaze out of Rhinox Hide, it just, it looks so beautiful on that Mephiston Red, especially when it dries. And it's, uh, to me, it's a much, much better product than Agrax Earthshade. If you've been using Agrax Earthshade, like I had been using when they had announced the new paint line, if you're still using it, give Rhinox Hide a try. Rhinox Hide and Lamian Medium, Two great tastes, taste great together, they look fantastic on your model. And um, th the reason why I love it also is because, you know, you know when you've shade with Agrax Earth Shade, it's going to, uh, it's going to pool and it's going to leave a very oily finish and you don't get that with Rhinox Hide. It, it dries matte or um, non-glossy and that's kind of what you want, you know, when you're, when you're working on a model that isn't supposed to be shiny. Her coat isn't supposed to be shiny. When it dries, it's going to look very gritty and dull and, um, and dark. And uh, the colors are going to be dulled, but then only so much that you can bring them up, bring it back up with layer paints and still have those shadows in the recesses. That's exactly what we want. You don't want to hit the silver and the gold. Um, I'm kind of leaving that for the known oil and the black wash. Um, but I'm, I'm definitely hitting the black. Uh, areas like her her leggings, her boots, her gloves, uh, her hat, I think. And um, don't hit the skin though. The skin we're going to shade with uh, some more umbral umber, which we're doing right now. I'm adding a little bit of umbral umber and ortic olive to to the uh, skin tone. And uh, for this, you don't want to use it like a glaze, like we just glaze the red coat and the reds of her armor. You actually want to add the Umbral Umber and the Ortic Olive to the side of your flesh wash, or your flesh color, rather, and slowly pull some of that color away and then 
um, add some of those two darker colors in. The, the thing is you don't want to mess up your flesh colors because you're going to be highlighting them back up in a little while. So um, I'm basically just darkening the skin under the cheekbones, like her jawline and under her neck. So you can see there's a little bit of green on the edge of my brush. It's, it's, it's very weird to use green as a shade rather than black or brown or red. So that umbral umber kind of dulls it down. The green is really just, you want to use it as a very fine hue. Adding a little bit of that umbral umber now. Shading the jawline, the lower jaw, under the neck, the uh, around the collarbone. And um, if it looks dark and weird and like all of a sudden your your girl's got a <laughs> got a five o'clock shadow, don't worry, we're gonna build it back up. Um, we're just trying to figure out where those shadows go right now. So her mouth, her jawline, it's okay if she looks like a sailor right now with a five o'clock shadow because we are going to add some of that highlight color in and we're gonna bring those lines back like I'm doing right now. So I'm leaving the shade under the cheekbone and I'm going to highlight a little bit by adding in some ivory paint. And when you're highlighting your model, remember when we shaded, we stuck to the lower jaw, under the neck, um, below the cheeks. When you're adding your, your highlight colors, you want to do the opposite. So I want to leave some of that color under the cheek, but I want to reinforce the lower jawline. So I'm going to paint very specifically on the lower jawline. I'm going to um, bring up the cheeks by painting the cheekbones and then focusing in, focusing the colors in towards the center where the nose is and the chin and the upper lip. But I'm going to leave the lower lip a little bit dark. So you have a contrast between the light and the dark colors on your model. That's basically my uh, philosophy on painting, highlighting, and shading. So uh, this is the last step we're going to do in our model. Uh, thank you guys so much. I've already let her dry off overnight. And we're going to be coming back with part two after we take a little break from all the War Machine stuff and take a look at some other projects on the table. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or if you're interested in a quote, like I said, you can always contact me at warbosstastestudios at gmail.com. That's all one word, warbosstastestudios at gmail.com. If you like the video, hit the like button. If uh, you want to leave me a comment, please do. I'm uh, slowly crawling and sludging and trudging my way through all of the comments that I've gotten in the last four months and uh, just want to make sure I touch base with all of you guys and answer any questions that you may have. Um, and yeah, just continue to grow the community and encourage you all. Find your motivation, find the thing that inspires you, even uh, if it's just to get your models painted three colors and put on a table find the thing that make you makes you enjoy the hobby and uh, you're never gonna get bored thanks for watching you guys we'll see you in the next video take care bye bye